Uh, I'm Ashwin Ramachandran, co-founder and CEO of Unit Systems, with more than 20 plus years of experience in product engineering and building systems of scale. Uh, while digital payments are there here to stay and we expect them to be fast, flexible and uh, simple to use, there are moments of frustration where uh, your transactions fail, your payment uh, does not go through or it takes a long time to uh, come through uh, kind of stuff. And these are points of frustration and these are challenges in general for digital adoption and financial inclusion. So this talk will be centered around how do you address those challenges and how do you use modern day visibility solutions to address those gaps there. So generally when we talk about the fintech industry and the financial services, there are three things which kind of uh, become strong pillars for it or these are the things behind the scenes. So one of them is scale. So today here you're talking about uh, millions and billions of transactions, millions of users. On an average we have 400 million users using the digital payment systems and, and those guardrails there. We are talking about 600 billion UPA transactions a month now and we are talking about uh, 1 billion consents a year in account aggregator which can go up to 5 billion consents a year soon. And second part is uh, you talk about the new age solutions which keep coming. So you talk about uh, instant payments, now buy now pay later, sachet insurance and uh, yesterday we talked about uh, the credit cards on UPI or uh, remittances using Bharat bill payment system. So these things keep very evolving very fast and these are called as business journeys which keep evolving very fast. The third aspect of it is the technology driving this fintech. So here you have your uh, cloud microservices, APIs, interconnections, uh, and then uh, you talk about Kubernetes, uh, serverless, Lambda functions. So these are all the technologies powering the fintech. So it's, it's a kind of combination of these things which kind of power the fintech ecosystem. And uh, typically when you talk about uh, this kind of power of scale and, and the use of use and simplicity that everybody expects now, your consumer expectations also change. So typically every enterprise now sees every transaction as a financial conversation. So there is a purpose, there is a context as to why I am doing a certain transaction there. And especially with the Generation Z and the Millennials, uh, these are kind of given uh, constructs. So the seamlessness, reliability, consistency of transactions are, are considered to be kind of given and, uh, and you don't expect uh, any kind of breakage in the systems there. But typically what happens and this is this is kind of what happens on the scenes and on the ground is uh, you end up having cases where there are points of failure. Um, it could be any kind of uh, transactions not going through or uh, taking long time to resolve or you have to call up the call center and say what happened to my payments kind of stuff. And, and given that these are uh, transactions dealing with money, uh, these cause more frustrating uh, frustration to the users as well. Uh, as a recent example, for example, my credit cards, uh, Uber credit card on my um, Uber app did not work. My Google Pay with my bank was not working correctly. And, and these are critical points at which uh, when you expect consistency in transactions, consistency of speed kind of stuff and when these kind of things happen, this is what causes your challenges to your digital adoption and financial inclusion as well there. And on an average here when you talk about scale, you are again talking about even from a, a quantitative viewpoint, you are talking about 13,000, 14,000 crores of transactions happening and you have failure rates in the order of 3 to 5 percent uh, at a minimum there which is kind of amounting to more than 200, 300 crores per day in terms of lost revenue itself there apart from the customer churn and frustration of users as well there. So what kind of causes these issues? So if you just go behind the scenes. Uh, the infrastructure itself is quite complex. So even though for us it's just a simple pay button on the uh, mobile app or, or just a QR scan for us, uh, there is a huge ecosystem behind the scenes. So you have your merchants, you have your acquiring banks, you have your payment service providers, you have the payment gateways, you have your uh, interchanges like your NPCI, master visa, then you have your uh, issuing banks. So a simple transaction for us which is just a buy button or a pay button uh, has to move through multiple entities. And uh, secondly, within an entity itself things are quite complex. So a transaction goes through multiple touch points. It goes through your API gateways, your infrastructure, your firewalls, your load balancers, your web servers, app servers, your core banking systems, your uh, critical applications like UPA, IMPS or making API calls or for example even your OTP transactions have to come through. So it's a, it's a quite a complex system of touch points across entities and within an entity itself uh, there. So when you have such a complex system at play, and when there are issues in any of your systems down the line, which we call as an east to west of a journey, uh, what happens to a transaction after we transact from the mobile, these kind of systems became extremely complex to diagnose in real time. So how do you know there is an issue happening? How do you know how to do diagnose your issues faster? How do you know even to predict incidents? Because these are points of engagement from a user viewpoint. Because as a user, they are totally blind to what happens behind the scenes. It is just a pay transaction which has to happen within a couple of seconds. But behind the scenes, there is a huge infrastructure, huge amount of complexity which goes behind the scenes. 
And today it's extremely difficult for a lot of the banks and fintechs to be proactive to diagnose these issues in real time and even to predict that these incidents are happening, causing uh, enormous amount of uh, tension, stress, loss of product hours, loss of revenue, customer uh, churn and frustration as well added to it. So uh, this is where in the new age world, when you talk about, uh, when we talked about the scale, we talked about the speed of uh, new services coming in, when you talked about the tech powering the fintech uh, there, you also need some kind of systems which kind of monitor your systems at a even higher level. And this is kind of what we call as your uh, business journey observability platforms there. How do you elevate your monitoring to a higher level? And, and typically these kind of platforms have five different components which have to come together. So one is uh, you need to look at your systems more from a top-down approach. So instead of looking within an entity, for example, within a bank or a fintech, instead of looking at your systems as an infrastructure, as an app, or as a cloud kind of thing, you kind of look, have to have a look at it from a holistic perspective. So what am I serving for the customer? So how do you look at it from a journey viewpoint? How do I look as my UPA transaction or my IMPS transaction uh, failing? So that's the top-down view that you need to have as a first cut criteria. Second cut is uh, these systems need to give you some sense of business context. So you need to go deeper and pare these systems down. For example, even if you take a UP application, uh, if you go a bit deeper, UP has multiple uh, transaction types. You have a pay, a collect, a mandate, and within that you have a two-party, three-party, four-party PSP system. So these are quite complex systems behind the scenes. So any system that you need to go has to have some level of domain and business context as to what are you trying to monitor there, apart from just seeing them as an application infrastructure going down there. Third part is, uh, we touched upon this, anything that you have to do has to scale. So we are talking about uh, billions of transactions and yesterday Mr. Dilip has been talked about one billion a day architecture. So it's going towards a billion a day kind of transactions there. So how do you kind of build these systems for scale from day one? And, and this has to be ground up. This can't be an afterthought to your systems uh, there. And obviously when you're talking about this scale, the systems have to be intelligent. So you can't have your human operators looking at a uh, lot of dashboards and alerts. So you need to have some sense of uh, intelligent system which will give you high fidelity ways of looking at your systems. Uh, what are my things going wrong? How do I do my root cause analysis better? Can I have recommendations to these systems there? So it, the scale kind of automatically leads you into some level of uh, AI driven monitoring as part of it. The last part is measurability because after doing all these things, how do you guarantee uh, services to your user uh, or to the partners? So how do you guarantee that your uptime is going to be finance? How do you guarantee that your transaction turnaround times is going to be less than a couple of seconds or a second there, right? So all these things have to kind of come together to give you measurability to your systems there. So until otherwise, you have all these five pillars in place. It's very difficult to kind of give the assured services to your customers. Uh, even though you will be uh, giving delivering these services, there will always be these moments of frustration from a user perspective there. So just going a bit more down, what are the typical components at a high level of what a good business journey observability platform should look like uh, there? So obviously it needs data, so the data has to come from your systems, the data has to come from your applications, your infrastructure, your cloud, and typically these sorts of data could be your logs, your metrics, your traces. These are the typical pillars of observability as what we call it there. And you also need data at an acquisition system. So how do you acquire this data? So it could be through, I mean, there are different ways and means of doing this stuff. You have agent, agentless means of doing this. And uh, today you're getting into open telemetry systems, open tracing, where uh, the, the systems itself has, uh, are giving something called a structured loss. So you're, you're having a schema-driven telemetry also coming out as part of it there. And typically what all the components observability system should have. So your typical thing should be around how do you ingest this data, how do you enter this data, how do you contextualize the data, how do you store this data for a long time, and then how do you kind of uh, mine the data for insights. So that's a key piece to this uh, puzzle there. And I'll, I'll just try, uh, try to d d dive a bit more into just a couple of uh, components here. So one is about the context there. So typically, in general, your uh, monitoring or observability systems will be looking at logs, metrics, traces in a vanilla fashion. So, but, uh, and again, touching back to the five pillars that we talked about, how do you understand the business context? So you need a lot of context to this data. So what we hear, what we call as data pipeline enrichments is what we call uh, those things. So how do you see UPA transaction as, uh, is in terms of its different transaction types? How do I see UPA as a pay, a collect, or a mandate? Because this starts giving flavors to the data that we are, we are trying to monitor. And that is what we kind of uh, call this as more of domain-driven observability. So how do you understand the payment, or how do you understand the top-down view of this monitoring uh, stuff? 
The second part of it is how do you bring AI into this stuff there. Again, this AI is slightly different from a consumer AI because here you don't have any label data. Nobody is going to tell you whether your alert is good or bad. Nobody gives you that uh, kind of flexibility as what typically a consumer AI applications have there, right? So here the way we look at uh, AI is in terms of two angles. How do you cold start? So given uh, large parts of data, like today we deal with uh, terabytes and uh, of logs per day. So given this kind of data sets, how do you kind of bootstrap yourself? It's called a cold start in the AA stuff. So how do you look for dynamic baselines? How do you look for past patterns kind of stuff? Then you augment it by more of domain centricity. That's why we talked about the metadata enrichments or the operators having a domain knowledge in terms of whether the threshold is making sense or not. So it's a combination of bootstrapping yourself with some domain driven understanding of what's going on there. And third is your feedback loops. Somebody has to tell you after that, after you do the cold start in terms of is it making sense to my system or not? Is this alert useful or not kind of stuff. So it has to be a combination of all these things coming together in terms of uh, a usable sustainable AI into your systems there. And finally, the end outcomes has to be more actionable. So it has to be in terms of insights or notifications or recommendations for your systems uh, kind of stuff there. So, and, and these kind of whatever we talked about the five pillars are kind of established in these block diagrams uh, here. So these are just quick representative snapshots of the end outcomes. Uh, for example, what you see here is an end-to-end -end view of a transaction. So what we do as a transaction from the mobile in, in the context of an entity, it could be a bank or a fintech or a payment gateway, moves through multiple touch points uh, there. So it enters your API gateway, it moves through multiple uh, components, it goes through your middleware systems, your enterprise service buses or your main uh, UPA switch. Uh, there is a call maybe to NPCI and back and a call to the core banking system for your debit credit and then possibly a merchant callbacks uh, there. Right, so it has, uh, as you can see, the kind of complexity here. This is just for one entity, and we talked about this into a number of entities as well. There, so just within one entity, you can see around seven eight touch points a single transaction has to touch uh, there. And we have not even included things like your fraud management check and other things which also happen as part of your systems there. So you, uh, at at a minimum, you have around six seven touch points it has to touch. A lot of them API calls, a lot of them goes through infrastructure like your uh, firewall load balancers, cloud infrastructure uh, kind of stuff. And then you multiply this by the scale. So you're talking about 20, 30 million transactions a day. So it becomes a humongous task to understand what's going on in systems. How do you know things are going wrong? How do you diagnose this faster? How do you predict incidents? How do you guarantee measurability to your customers there, right? So this is the kind of context that you're talking about. So what you see here is a unified visibility map. It's almost like a Google map for your transactions. So that you have a visual layer of what's going on. So what is going bad? What's going red? Which systems are causing bottlenecks uh, kind of stuff. Uh, these could be other representative viewpoints. For example, how do you slice and dice? Uh, I mean, again, these all come from the context that we talked about the business and the observability platform. The moment you add context uh, into those uh, systems there, you can slice and dice in different ways. So how do I know which merchants are coming to me the most? Which merchants' failure uh, rates are happening the most? You can also create a lot of ML models on top. For example, what you see there is a customer satisfaction index. So it's an ML model created using your payment turnaround times or your failure rates and the psychology of user experience. So it allows you to play around with more of the data sets, much more amenable for your enterprise uh, there. You can also have much more intelligent insights, uh, we call them insight cards. So for example, when you have failure rates, how do you know which system deep in your touch point is causing those issues? Uh, how do you build a better recommender systems for your root cause analysis? How do you even get into prediction forecasting? Again, because you have large swarms of data here, you can also have your ML models running on larger, larger volumes of data with the feedback loops, which can give you much more uh, recommendation and insights or actionable outcomes coming as part of that there. So uh, we touched upon, uh, or in some sense, when we talked about the business and observability platform, we touched upon it or we just scratched the surface of it. And uh, today it's hardly even solved 10 to 15 percent of what we're talking about here. And uh, it has a lot more to go in the future. So the way we see this evolving over a period of time is uh, the business in the observability platform will start yielding more actionable outcomes, the insights. Uh, then it will start driving automation in your systems. That's why we talk about self-healing and other parts of it. How do you, how do you make sure that uh, apart from knowing what is wrong, how do I fix it fast? Then how does it lend itself to measurability? How do I guarantee uptimes to my customers there? So that's the linear way of looking at this stuff. That's the, that's the typical thing. Second part where we see uh, it kind of evolving is uh, when, when because the fact that the systems are again uh, highly contextual and top-down driven use cases, how does it drive other use cases on the ground? So how does it augment your business analytics? How does it augment your fraud? How does it augment your compliance? 
So typically every transaction will have four or five components to it. There is a business component of a transaction, there is a risk, there is an operational, there is a compliance component of a transaction. So here the business observability platform, we here talk about the operation part of it. But uh, the way this is going to evolve is going to touch all other aspects of your systems as well. Augmenting your business, your security, your fraud, your risk, compliance kind of stuff as well there. And that's the way we see this and that is what is going into the roadmap uh, as well there. So just to quickly uh, summarize and, uh, and uh, give a context, so uh, we, we have designed and developed and deployed these kind of systems at scale uh, in a lot of enterprises, uh, including in, at NPCI uh, as well. Uh, our system monitors more than 8 billion transactions a month uh, today and we are also listed in multiple Gartner reports as well, but we kind of give a summary of uh, what we do today across there. Right? Would be happy to take any questions or even chat on the sidelines as well. Thank you.